performance enhancing drugs. You know, the uh, the famous drug that you, you take US's military presence when you want to run really fucking fast and have weed. Shakari Richardson is suspended for one month after uh, she tested positive for, get this, the devil's lettuce. When I think of, when I think of someone, when I think of someone who wants to run really fucking fast, I think they better not be smoking the devil's lettuce, the ganja, okay? I mean, totally, dude. Well, well, devastating. Absolutely devastating. When I found this out, I was, I, I was shocked. I was so angry. So uh, the American sprinter Shikari Richardson, who was set for a star turn at the Tokyo Olympics this month, could miss the games after testing positive for marijuana. Ten months of contributing to the champagne. Richardson, 21, won the women's 100-meter race at the U.S. track and fields uh, trials in Oregon last month, but her positive test automatically invalidated her result in the marquee event. The United States Anti-Doping Agency announced the positive test result Friday morning and said Richardson had accepted a suspension for one month starting on June 28th. Of course, uh, the uh, place that she actually smoked weed in, it's legal. It's not even like an illegal thing that, that, uh, that she was uh, taking at the time. It, just because it's illegal in Japan doesn't mean anything. It's not a performance-enhancing drug. I was making a joke. It's just an illegal substance. Shikari? Didn't I say it? I said Shikari, right? Oh, okay, Shikari. Doesn't Joe Rogan literally love to get high and exercise? It's um, my favorite. In an interview with NBC on Friday, like <clears throat> Richardson blamed crazy. the positive test on her use of marijuana as a way to cope with the unexpected death of her biological mother while she was in Oregon for the Olympic trials. Richardson, who was raised by her grandmother, yeah. Said she learned about the death from a reporter during an interview and called it triggering and definitely nerve shocking. Sent me into a state of emotional panic, she said, adding, I didn't know how to control my emotions or deal with my emotions during that time. Chanel, thank you. And Shakari Richardson joins us now. Good morning, Shakari. I just want to ask a simple question first. How are you doing? Um, I'm blessed to be alive. That's yeah. about it. <laughs> This is not easy. This is a hard moment that you're in right now. And I, I thank you for being on. And I know you wanted to tell your story. So tell me, you know, what happened? What led up to this positive test? Um, just honestly, boy, just, I want to take responsibility. Bro, her fucking fire. Her, her fucking fire, the alarm. It's, I know, I have the same thing. In my house as well, so. For my actions, I know what I did. I know what I'm supposed to do. Um, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm allowed not to do, and I still made that decision. But um, not making an excuse or looking for any. Unrelated to her ban, she has some super problematic tweets. Bro, what, what is she like? Fucking eighteen? Yeah, of course she has problematic tweets, dude. Sag. Who cares? Empathy in my case, but just okay, she's twenty-one, dude. Exactly. However, being in that position of my life, finding out something like that, something that I would say is probably one of the time, biggest things time, that have impacted me time, time, positively time. and negatively in my life when it comes to dealing with the relationship I have with my mother. So that definitely was a very heavy topic on me, and people know, don't understand what it's like to have to. All right, people do. We all have our different struggles. We all have our different things we deal with. But to put on a face, to have to go in front of the world and put on a face and hide my pain. Um, like, who? I don't know. Who are you? Or right, who am I to tell you how to cope when you're dealing with a pain? Or 
Dude, you follow Twitch's rules even if they're stupid. This is the same for her. She has to follow the Olympic rules. Yeah, well, the Olympic rules are really fucking stupid. If Twitch had rules that were incredibly dumb, I would still criticize them, right? I would, and I do. I understand Twitch's rules around gore and nudity. I get mad when they don't let you fucking, uh, when they don't let you get away with uh, a little bit of accidental nudity or shit like that. Smoking weed is the exact same concept. It's an idiotic rule in general, okay? Billy Hassan best streamer. There'd be no smashed. issue with her drinking alcohol, though. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like literally, that's the that's the idiotic part of it is that like she could drink all the alcohol she wants. Happy birthday to my sister, Kelly. Hassel. You're dealing with a struggle that you've never experienced before or that you've never thought you would have to deal with. Like, who am I to tell you how to cope? Who am I to tell you that you're wrong for hurting? So I think just honestly, just leading up to that, dealing with my mental health, dealing my, with my mental as is with leading up to the games. Um, every time stepping on the track, definitely expected to be um, a record-breaking time or something like that. So just with that, um, pressure in itself was also just another, another thing with this actually been my first full professional career, my first full professional um, circuit this year due to, you know, the pandemic. So just considering all of that, all of that put together a long, long time with my agent, my sponsor, my, my sponsorship, my family, uh, knowing me dealing with all of this stuff. So, um, Shakari, Shakari I, I just want people to understand where you're coming from um, and tell me if, if this is correct, but you, it was a few days before your big race and the trials, you found out that your biological mother had passed away. Olympians can't be pothead. No way we can set that kind of example for our children and community. Dude, are you fucking stupid? A pothead? You're a fucking loser who sits on his couch all goddamn day and watches Twitch streams. These motherfuckers are literally some of the greatest athletes of on the planet. If they can smoke weed and be able to compete this way, then I think they can do whatever the fuck they want, okay? If anything, it literally is like... Oh, that's sarcasm? Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. I didn't want to be so brutal, but... That shit pisses me. The people actually do feel that way, by the way. That's why they fucking uh, took away, like, Michael Phelps' endorsements and shit. Aren't you kind of a loser, too, for streaming all day, too? Yes, I am. I am a fucking huge loser. You knew it? You took the bait for content? No, I, I didn't. I actually thought that was an unironic fucking take. Because there are people that have takes like that. Yeah, we're going to talk about the banning uh, black women for having too much testosterone as well. Um, you found out when a reporter told you, and it was after that that um, you had, it ingested some kind of marijuana. I, I should mention, you were in Oregon. Ingested some kind of marijuana is perhaps the most like square way of, of referencing smoking weed. And it's legal in Oregon. You didn't violate any law, but it was against the rules of your sport. And as you said, you knew that. But is, is that what happened? Is that how this unfolded? Honestly, um, yes, that is the story. I had an interview scheduled with my agent. I knew I was having an interview. I knew um, going into an interview. Like, it was, I was just thinking it would be a normal interview. And then on the interview, to hear that information come from a complete stranger, Oh, was definitely triggering, was definitely nerve shocking because it's just like, how are you to tell me that? Like, you know, it's like, and not, no offense against him at all. He's just doing um, his job, but definitely that sent me in a state of mind, in a state of, of emotional panic, if anything. Mm. And still knowing that I still, even though I'm here, I still have to go out and put on a performance for, um, put up a performance for my dream, go out there and still compete to what it is. So yes, definitely triggered, and from there just blinded, with, blinded by emotions, blinded by sadness, blinded by just hurting, hiding hurt. Honestly, 
for the fact that I know that I can't hide myself. So at least in some type of way. I Yeah, I mean, there is definitely uh, there is definitely some weird shit going on uh, with the Olympics, place. but so that's one thing. So Shikari is uh, Shikari is uh, getting uh, or she might still be able to run, but um, she's getting suspended because she ingested weed. I guess it's like edible. Uh, there are a you bunch of uh, runners high. from Africa that uh, can't run because their T levels are too high, despite being cis women. Okay. I'm going to show you that in a second as well. This has happened already in the past with Caster Semenya, and now Christine uh, Maboma and Beatrice Masalingi are the latest accomplished athletes to be excluded under the rule that basically destroyed Caster Semenya's uh, career. Two 18-year-old cisgender sprinters from uh, Namibia, Christine Maboma and Beatrice Masalingi, have been banned from running the Olympic 400-meter dash. Because they have a natural high testosterone level, they're now the two latest African women to be banned from the track events because they won't fit the World Athletics Organization's definition of womanhood. This is the same concept as, like, saying Michael Phelps can't fucking swim because he has his arms are too long. It's like saying tall NBA players should not be able to play because they're too fucking tall. It's not 100% certain that it is natural. I understand. I understand that. It comes from assuming secretly that they are doping. Okay? That's where it comes from. You already know what my take is on the subject. I am not anti-PED. Uh, Damn, how the fuck does the IOC go with the racism and transphobia double kill? Yeah, they let trans people run, but not these guys. So wrong, lol. Well, the thing is, they let trans people run for this reason. Like they don't, if they don't hit a certain level of testosterone, because a lot of, because trans women are taking hormones. So their T levels are significantly lower. That's the point. But then it ends up, uh, it ends up fucking over uh, uh, cisgender women with a higher testosterone. This is such an issue. Why not just do away with men's, women's divisions to just complete compete groups by testosterone levels? Law, like I don't, I don't really understand why they. Um, that's not proof, though. Where's the science in this? No, there is no proof. And if they can't prove it, they just say, "Hey, we want to make sure it's like fair." I guess. Um, by by putting a cap on on T, it's a tough issue. This change the hormone levels, making womanhood was I think actually specifically brought about to help trans women be able to compete. Go back to politics, LMFAO. I'm literally doing politics right now. This is at the heart of politics, you fucking idiot. WADA wants them to follow their white rules and hyper-focus on these individuals. Like Wasn't this rule originally meant to keep trans women out of the competition? I mean... Hassan, please come to Chad France, is about to find please. out what sex is, that sex is not a binary and women don't have all the same levels of testosterone. Yeah. Um, it is, uh, it is kind of fucking weird.
there is more gender variance between women than between women and men. So like by their definition, some trans women are more women than cis women, which is ironic considering how conservative these assholes are. Yeah. They want to limit the amount of testosterone. They want to limit the testosterone levels in all, all the uh, people that are competing, partially because it's hard to... Sometimes it's not easy to figure out if someone's doping, okay? And I think that's like... This is... I think this is actually a, uh, a shortcut that they are taking. And the reason why they're taking the shortcut is because it's not easy to figure out if someone's uh, to figure out if someone is like doping or has cycled. Okay? And because they can't do that, they're like, well, okay, well, you know, we're just going to cap the uh, uh, the levels of te the testosterone levels that you have. There is no relation between unaltered indigenous and endogenous testosterone of sports performance. Uh, I know, surprising, right? Also, there's complete overlap of testosterone values for cis males and cis females. Endogenous testosterone histogram for men and women in elite sport, a study of 693 elite athletes. In statistics, completely overlap means it, the, the bottom of the male range is the same as the bottom of the female range, near zero. But the top of the female range doesn't quite extend to the top of the male range. Both testosterone elite men are statistically overrepresented in elite male sports. 0.5% of elite male athletes were naturally below the average for cis female athletes, and 25% of elite cis male athletes are below the current cutoff. I don't know what the fuck this means, dude. I, it's just like, I don't understand it. I'm going to be honest with you. I actually don't understand it. What is your full stance on PEDs as a college and aspiring professional athlete? I don't want to be forced to take substances that will kill my organs in order to be successful in my sport. I like PEDs. I think they should be studied. Um, I think most people already take them. I mean, not I think, I know. You know something that you can't cap? The top of the hour ad that we need. You think PDs? No, I, I would. Pass. I'm. I have an addictive personality. If I took PDs, I feel like I would always cycle. I will probably in the future though. This video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>